This is Salvador Carriaga. This is the Green Project. Still grow your own food. Yum, 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 yum. The beauty about living in a forest by yourself. How would you like to grow your own food? Fresh, right off your backyard. Hi, my name is Salvador Carriaga with The Green Project. Today, we're going to teach you how to grow your own food even if you live in concrete jungle. Yes, you can do that. You do that through container gardening. Container gardening begins with garbage management. In the cities, if there are people, they're garbage. If they're garbage, you have compost to start working with. You recycle, reuse, repurpose, restore, and you redeem. You turn trash to treasure, junk to jewel, waste into wealth, garbage into gold. Here before me are materials that you can use for your organic gardening. This is a soil that's from the leaves that were composted. Black, rich, vegetables love this. This one is the advanced form of soil and it's already sticky and started to be muddy. Here you go. In Butuan, daghan kaayoy mga tipasi o mga uhot. Just compost them and it's food for your gardens. And of course, goat manure already composted. Right here are fresh goat manures. After a while, they turn into soil. Mix this up together along with your food scraps. Ah, here you go. Eggshells. It's rich in calcium, great for your garden. Anything you compost is good for your garden. One important aspect of growing your garden in your backyard, especially container gardening, is to use coffee ground. There are hundreds and thousands of kilos of coffee ground being thrown in a dump. You can use them for your gardens. Coffee ground is rich in nitrogen and they attract worms. I use them in my very composting. Worms love latte, cappuccino, mocha, and all those expensive things. But you can get it for free. Go to your nearest Starbucks and they will give you pre-packed bags like this full of fresh coffee ground. Ask Bose Cafe, the manager, talk to him. Go to McDonald's, they throw away their coffee grounds. These things, garbage, they can be turned into gold. Trash can be turned into treasure. And your gardens, we love them. One part of your compost that you can use, that both your plants as well as the worms will really love, are manures. And one of the better ones are the goat manures. Goat manures can decompose easily. They're not too hot, but they also have enough nitrogen that can help provide nutrients for your garden. These are fresh goat manures. After a while, they become soy like this. You can even mix them together so that when this one decomposed, after this one has been eaten by the plants, you have fresh nutrients for your garden. Goat manure, don't throw them away, use them. A great part of your compost are tipasi, rice hulls. This is the fresh rice hull. This one already has started to compost. This is great to be a mixture for your gardens because it will help aerate the soil. It makes the water go through a lot faster and be used more evenly. Tipasi, especially during rice harvest, is abundant. You can buy them in rice mills at two pesos per sack. If they do it for you, they'll charge you 3 pesos or 5 pesos to sack it and another 10 pesos for the sack itself. When I get back, I'll tell you about how to use containers for your container gardening. 
Your kitchen scraps are a great part of container gardening. You're going to have a lot of garbage after you cook, including eggshells. Eggshells are calcium in certain food for your gardens. Take the eggshells, crush them, and mix them up. And voila, you've got another part of your container garden. In early times, the American Indians would plant a whole fish in the ground and put two, three kernels of corn on top of it. And they get great, healthy, rich, organic corn. Food scraps, anything that biodegrades, are a great part of organic farming. Anything that is organic and not animal-based is good for composting. In order to stay organic, be sure everything you compost is also free of toxic chemicals. Applying a vitamin-rich compost pile into the soil can make the plants incredibly healthy and tasty. Healthy fruits and vegetables translate into healthy food on the dining table. And healthy food intake has been shown to go hand-in-hand -hand with healthy human beings living a robust life. By composting, you can also help cut off the amount of waste that is being thrown into our dump sites. Composting also cuts down on the usage of chemical fertilizers, which are damaging to our water supply. In addition, composting can save money, not only for a household, but it can also help balance a city's and eventually a nation's budget. For example, simply by composting, a household can cut down its budget by raising toxic-free fruits and vegetables, while phasing out the need to spend money on chemical fertilizers. Less garbage being sent to the dump site also means a reduction in the waste management cost for your city, and eventually, for the entire country. When I get back, I'll tell you about how to use containers for your container gardening. Important part of container gardening, of course, are containers. Recycled containers. You reuse them, repurpose them, restore them, redeem them, and turn these as trash into treasure, junk into jewel, waste into wealth, garbage into gold. We're surrounded with containers. We throw them away. And these take hundreds of years to biodegrade. You can use them as containers for the gardens. You can do container gardening, Hanging garden, vertical garden, horizontal garden, upside down garden to grow your own food. This one, you can put them one on top of the other so that when you water it, the water goes down, the water goes down, and you only water plant for a whole row of gardens. Also, you can use bigger containers like this. And you just hook this up, put your plants in, the, in these holes, and then put another plant in the bottom. Literally, you can torture plants, you can hang plants, you can turn them upside down, and they'll still give you food. Poverty is a choice. You don't have to be poor, your children don't have to be hungry, you live in a rich country. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. You can bloom where you're born, grow where you're planted. You can be self-sustaining. Welcome to Sunrise Mushroom Farm. You can do farming even inside your own house. You can wear anything you want or wear nothing. You can wear lipstick, makeup, you can wear high heels or nightgown and still grow your own food. The first thing you need to do is get a substrate like this. And substrates like this are really loaded with nutrients and germs that will start a mushroom. And you take that mushroom, put it in a container like this, put some water, about an inch thick, and leave it there. The water evaporates and provides moisture for the mushroom to thrive. Every day, you can harvest mushroom for your own consumption. And if you have enough like what we have here, you can sell them and turn a business out of container gardening. 
Oyster is a variety of mushroom that grows especially well indoors. They are popular, quick and easy to grow and have great health and medicinal benefits. They can grow on a wide range of substrate materials such as chopped straw, cardboard, old cotton clothes, unbleached paper or a mix of any of these. Make sure the substrates are placed into bags with small holes or air filters in them for air exchange. The bags are then placed in a warm dark room to incubate and begin the first phase of growth. Only 10 to 14 days are needed for the spawn to grow a full web or root-like threads of mycelium and colonize the growing substrate. Only 10 to 14 days are needed for the spawn to grow a full web of root-like threads of mycelium and colonize the growing substrate. Once the growing medium is fully colonized by the spawn, it is time for the mushrooms to start fruiting. Fed by water and nutrients from mycelium, these tiny pins then rapidly grow and develop into full-size mushrooms in just 5 to 7 days. It takes about just 5 to 8 weeks to grow these crops of oyster mushrooms. Harvest the mushrooms by twisting the fruits of the bag. Avoid tearing them as you may damage the mycelia. This is lunch, right from your own living room. Enjoy! This is an above ground compost. You can dig a hole or you can just put it above the ground like this one. You can put leaves, even food scraps or even cow manure, pig manure, chicken manure, goat manure, any kind of manure. I guarantee you it will not stink. What you do is you cover it with charcoal or ashes and then cover it with tarp. Water it first and then a week later, open it again, water it, cover it with some charcoals or some ashes, and then cover it again with tarp. Turn it around after two, a week, and just keep turning it around every week, watering it. After a month, this will be compost, and it will be a part of your soil for your hanging garden. In container gardening, composting is very important. Composting does not have to be complicated and neither does it have to be expensive. You can even compost above the ground. You can dig a hole, put some compost in there, or just put your compost above the ground. The key thing is you use ashes to cover any fresh food scraps so that it will not stink. And to further keeping it from stinking, cover it with a tarp. And then turn it over after a week, put some water in it, and then cover it with a tarp. The next week, put some more water in it, turn it over. Two months later, your compost will be dark brown rich soil. Your container gardening is going to need a soil, preferably a composted soil. Right before me are several composts. This one is a compost that's made out of leaves. This one is made out of goat manure, also already composted. And this one is made out of tipasi, also composted. And this is vermicompost. You mix all of these together, put it here along with this, and you have the best organic compost for your hanging garden. This is similar to mixing your cement. Only you're mixing compost. Leaves. Mix them up together. Vermicompost or vermicast mixed with soil. And the last part is the still freshly harvested rice hole. This will help the soil not be so sticky and not so muddy.
There's really no science or art in mixing your compost. All you have to do is just have a little bit of everything, just like nature. In the forest, nobody mixed a compost. And yet, all the trees are growing like crazy. One more round and then we'll be finished. Okay, as you can see, we've got a good mixture right here. Put this in your container and you're ready to hang them and put your seedlings. Ready for planting. Container gardening. You can plant on this side, on this side, on that side, on top of it, and down all the way in the bottom. You may have to plug it so that all, all the soil will not drop, and then hang it. You'll produce more food in this than one square meter of land. Before we continue to container gardening, here's an additional fun fact that you might find interesting and helpful when you start planting. Organic farming, sometimes you use ornamental plant to serve as hedges so that the pest will go to your ornamental plants instead to your vegetable gardens. Some ornamental plants are also repellents. So you can surround your garden with these repellent plants so that the pest will not go to your plants and instead they will go somewhere else. Again, the secret to container gardening is recycling, reusing, repurposing, turning trash to treasure, junk to jewel, waste to wealth, garbage into gold. These are just sitting and rotting in dumps. You can buy them cheap and turn them into useful tool for your organic farming, hanging garden, vertical garden, horizontal garden, and... This is what's called the upside down tomato. You can take a tomato, torture it by hanging it, and then turning it upside down, and voila, you can still have all the tomatoes that you need. And to add measure, just add some more tomato plants here, and then tomato go up, tomato goes down, it's still tomatoes. Actually, the tires will even be better than any container because it can hold moisture and water on its side. And you don't have to water it every day. Container gardening, turn your trash into treasure. This is a box type container gardening. It's a rotting door from an old house. So instead of throwing it away or turning it into firewood, it makes an attractive container garden. You can use anything under the sun to grow your own food. The principle in container gardening is that there's no unfertile soil with a fertile mind. It's not the soil, it's a soul. You can grow food, even in concrete jungle. You can use any material, from wood to plastic, to anything that is non-biodegradable, and turn them into container gardening. 
Turmeric is a superfood. It cures a lot of ailment. It helps prevent a lot of diseases. You don't have to have rich, deep soil to grow turmeric. You can grow turmeric even in container garden. Right here, a three and a half foot turmeric being raised on a wooden raised bed. I hope that after watching this episode, you will be inspired to find plastic containers around your home and make your own compost and start planting. Beside plastic containers, tires, and wooden boxes, you can also be creative by using literally anything that holds potting soil. Unique containers for your growing plants include boots, carton boxes, hollow blocks, styrofoam boxes, and laundry baskets. Metal boxes such as paint buckets and water tanks can create a beautiful rustic look. You can have the choice of painting your containers to make them look pretty, so your home will not look like a dump. Just make sure to use non-toxic paint and that all the containers aren't going to leach dangerous chemicals into edible plants. And there are enough holes in the bottom of each container for drainage. Never feel discouraged again when you only live in a home with no to a little piece of land because container gardening makes growing your own food possible. And in the process, you're helping Mother Nature as well. You don't have to be poor. Your children don't have to be hungry. You live in a rich country. Through organic farming, you can grow your own food, even if you live in concrete jungle. I hope you've learned something today about organ farming. Thank you for watching our show. This is The Green Project. My name is Salvador Cariaga. Join us next time. Thank you.